The Lewis Foundation of Classical Ballet was formed by Devang Banushali and myself, Jana Lewis, in 2006. Um, the aim is to bring ballet to the forefront in India and to be Asia's best ballet school and company. That's our goal. So we began in 2006 and before that it was a very long journey. I arrived in India in 1998. It was my yoga guru's 80th birthday celebration. My yoga guru is BKS Iyengar and he was having an 80th birthday celebration in Pune. And I decided that I really had always wanted to come to India and I would come for that celebration. And I, I pretty much knew then that maybe I would not leave and I haven't left since. So I came for his celebration and travelled to Pune from Chennai and travelled overland from Chennai just to see part of the country. And I just fell in love with India and never left. I've travelled from Kerala to Leh Dark. I've seen a lot of Indian classical dance which I absolutely loved and I found it to be in a class of its own. And during my travels I saw a lot of people doing what they termed as Western dance. And for me this Western dance was really nothing that I recognized and it wasn't at the same level as your Indian classical forms. But seeing so much dance and I felt it's no good feeling bad about it, I need to do something about it. And ballet forms the basis of all Western dance forms. So I felt it was really important to it, for people to evolve as a dancer to have a ballet base. So I started taking workshops nationally. So initially, I, I did take a lot of workshops also for Indian classical dancers on injury prevention and working with the culminating points between Indian classical dance and ballet. How they're actually, when you look at the both art forms, they seem so different. And when you break it down, you, there are so many similarities that you work with. I wanted to use ballet to help Indian classical dancers understand their bodies a little better and how the external rotation of the legs should work because I saw it being cheated a lot on my journey and travels. And when the legs are externally rotated, properly, then there are far fewer injuries. And what I was meeting was a lot of Indian classical dancers, older dancers, who had to stop dancing due to knee injuries and back injuries. When I first started teaching ballet workshops here, ballet was very uh, unknown. This was 20 years ago, and now I can honestly say most people here know what ballet is. I could attribute this to um, a toy that introduced lots of ballet videos into India. So you had Barbie and the Twelve Dancing Princesses, Barbie and the Nutcracker, Barbie and Swan Lake. And she really popularized ballet because that was then taken to everyone in India and they all wanted to dance in those pretty dresses like the Barbie doll. And actually that really changed things. And those movies when I came 20 years ago were unknown. So children were willing and wanting to experience something. If their parents had traveled outside India, they perhaps knew what ballet was, um, but it wasn't popular. So we'd have little girls coming who were expecting to do some loose form of Indian classical dance, not really knowing what to do. So it was very important for me that I demonstrated everything so people could see what they were trying to achieve because there was no visual impression that the children had in those early days. And it has changed so much in 20 years. So taking dance to everyone is really important to me. Um, I believe that dance is for everyone and ballet, especially in UK, there's always a stigma that surrounds it. And I, as I grew up as a child, I didn't really like that. I, I felt like it should be available to everyone. It shouldn't be those in, in the upper class sector who could afford it. And when I landed in India the first time, there was just loads of street kids all running up to me. And their energy was so incredible. I just wanted to channel that energy into something positive. So I was very sure from the day I landed in India that we would teach underprivileged children and street children and work with them and share the joy of dance and the love of ballet. So we do teach underprivileged children every week and we have scholarship students who come from that sector as well and for me that is really important as well as when we do a show we have one day specially for 1500 NGO children who come and watch the show they draw us pictures and send send us cards and messages with how they enjoyed the show what I hope in the future is that I can have a bigger team of teachers here with me and we can take workshops in so many of the NGOs. Right now we're limited to just a few, but I want to expand on that further.
Everyone used to say, oh, Jana, you, you make it look so easy and so effortless. I can honestly say I held the whole thing together by a very fine thread that could have gone at any given moment in time. I taught right up until I was one week before I had my daughter, Jazzy. And I could have taught right up until the day before I had her. For me, it was not a problem at all. I was still dancing, I was still doing yoga, I was still standing on my head, I was still doing everything I normally do. Um, people did view it very strangely. Three weeks after I gave birth to her, I was teaching. She was in the studio with me all the time. I would always have one of my dance company members or one of my teachers, Elina Waisung, helped a lot, and Pooja Mehta. Both of them teach with me, and they um, really supported me. They would always be in the studio. My daughter needed feeding. I would leave the class. They would continue the class. When I came back, I would carry on teaching. They would, they would entertain my daughter. And it just worked. She's an amazing human being. And for me, I wouldn't have had it any other way. But I do honestly say, you know, if I had to go and change her nappy or something in the middle of a class, when I went into the changing room where there was a lot of parents sitting, I did used to feel that there was a lot of eyes on me, like, what is she doing? How can she be teaching and doing this at the same time? And I do feel people judged me. However, I'm one of these people that I am who I am and we just have to go with who we are and not conform to what everybody expects you to do. So my advice to other women in business is look at what your downfalls are. So for me, growing a business, being quite cutthroat, quite forceful, quite powerful, and, and being very clear about your objectives, trying to make it grow and fund itself, these are not really my field of expertise. My partner, Devang Banushali, I would say is solely responsible for that. And, and to most women, if you have an idea of something you want to do in life, go ahead and do it because you can always find someone to join you and fill in the gaps where you're not experienced. And I think it's really important that you're honest to yourself where your, where your strengths and weaknesses lie. The advice I would give my daughter today is for her to be true to herself. Never lie to yourself and pretend you're somebody you're not. Really, it's important that you're true to yourself, you recognize your abilities, your weaknesses, your strengths, and you're really honest with yourself all the time. She needs to believe in herself and follow that through. There should be no waver in what your belief system is. If you, if you want something in life, believe you can get it and you will. I felt that I was performing a lot on TV and living in this very plastic world. Dancers can be incredibly um, backbiting and the dance world and people are very false and say one thing to your face, one thing behind your back. And I never fitted into that, so that's why I took up yoga initially. And the more I did yoga, the more it made me be true to myself and to who I really am. The social scene did not work for me. I could not integrate with other dancers. I didn't fit into that category. I felt very alienated. I didn't grow up in a very spiritual environment. My father refused me to go to religious education classes. So something was always missing. And the more yoga I did, the more I felt, felt connected spiritually to something else. And um, this was a journey and it took a long time for it to evolve that I need to change my life. I'm not happy. One day I had a really bad car accident and I only broke a bone in my foot but I had a really major cartilage injury, injury to my chest and I was lucky I didn't break six bones in my body. My car was a total write-off and somebody coming driving on the wrong side of the road in a brand new sports car and he was on the wrong side of the road on a hill just collided with me head on at a really high speed. The car was about to explode on fire and I was trapped in it. So this situation for me was a huge turning point in my life. I was in pain every day, so suddenly my job became a job which it had never been before. Dance is what I love doing, teaching is, is what I love to do, and I never thought of it as work. And suddenly it became work. I used to go in pain, in agony to teach, and realize that what if this whole physicality was taken away from me like that? What then? Where would what would inspire me in life and it was that and everybody was feeling very awful for me and you know oh, you're lucky to be alive but this is terrible to you you can't move properly why you 
But for me, this was a huge turning point. And I said to everyone, there's a reason this has happened. And everyone would be like, well, that's optimistic. But what is it, Jana? And I'd say, I don't know. But when I know, it'll, everything will be clear. And that's when I decided I'd been thinking about coming to India for so long. But I had not done anything about it because it's always easy to think about wanting to do something but not actually do it. Whenever I thought about coming to India, I thought, how will I sell my business? How will I, sell my, how will I tell my family? How will I tell everyone I'm going to just change my life? So that I always put all these obstacles in my way and when that happened, I decided that I would never do that again. And if I think something, I will go for it and follow it through. And it's not that you need to see the end of your journey. You, like if I think now, when I started teaching here, how will I be Asia's best, how will we be Asia's best ballet school and company? I, I wouldn't know, but you just have to begin. And so I just put my house on the market the next day, a week later after my car accident. And I told my family, that's it, I'm leaving. They were like, why? Why are you going to go to India? You of all people. And I said, I don't know, but I need to go. And so I, that car accident for me was a really big turning point in just understanding you can think about something forever till the, for the rest of your life, but unless you actually just get up and do it, as soon as you have an idea, just begin it. Because all the path and the journey for it will all fall into place if you actually just start. If you feel like you're trying to do a job or earn a living, then you should give it up. Because if, if it's dance, if it's a passion and it comes from your soul, it is never work. It is something you would do for free, which is how I was, which is why Devan Banamshali is important to the growth of this business. Because I would just do what I do every day of my life without even thinking about money. And it's really important if you're trying to do something to make a living, then it's very different from doing something and following your heart and your passion. So if it's dance, or acting or singing or something and it really is a passion never view it as work get up every day of your life and just love what you do because you are one of the lucky ones there are so many people in this world that don't get to do what they love to do in their lives and I think it's important that you feel privileged through all the struggle you need so much discipline to succeed to constantly work to improve and to constantly be critical of yourself so your growth is always there the day I walk into a class and think I know everything about teaching I'm going to give up teaching because that will never happen I learn from my students every time I teach a class